Hello, I am back. Uh, I have a new laptop. Everything that's used in my future videos is going to be a completely different drawing. It's just same format, different drawing. That is why, if you have not been keeping up with my community tab, rest in peace old laptop. My rabbit spilled water on it. It was not fixable. Yes. Um, I wanted to remake my Neo Pronouns video uh, for a few reasons. One, my opinions on it have kind of evolved and I think I can articulate them better. Um, two, that's just one of my first videos and I feel like it was very poorly done both in the way I presented myself and the editing, just not my best work. And two, because since then I have learned that one of my friends uh, uses Neo Pronouns along with they, them, and I have gotten their perspective on it, and it's only slightly changed my opinion, but we'll get into that. Um, I'm going to format the video in a few different sections as there's different types of neo-pronouns, and I have varying opinions on them, uh, as well as kind of an introduction on some disclaimers, um, and redirecting you to other things about why I believe those, because I'm not going to make this like an hour-long video. Now, the first thing I want to touch on, which is part of what prompted me uh, to do this, is because actually two of my friends who use uh, Neo Pronouns have asked me about this specific thing, so I want to clear it up before we move on. There is the argument made that I have addressed in pretty much all of my Xenogender videos, which also applies here, that some people use Neo Pronouns because generally autistic, but some people say neurodivergent and include other disorders, but generally that autistic people have a harder time recognizing or understanding their gender or that it fits more with their unique understanding of it, but there is no basis for autistic people understanding gender any differently than anyone else. It relies on the misinformation that gender is purely a social construct, and I'm not going to go too deep into that because I've done it time and time again. I will link videos where I talk about it in the description if you want a more in-depth opinion about that um, and why I believe that that stems from identifying yourself through misinformation. But I just want to get that out of the way. I do not have a different opinion on autistic or neurodivergent people as an autistic person using them, as I think that that argument is based solely on misinformation. Um, so moving on. And the next thing I want to do is define terms. So a neo-pronoun is essentially anything other than he, she, or they, and some people define it as a neo-pronoun as it's not traditionally used for people and some don't. Um, I will not be including it as a human pronoun. It will be its own section. Um, so a neo-pronoun in general is anything other than he, she, or they. Um, however, there are subcategories such as xenopronouns, which refer to usually either pre-existing nouns being used as a pronoun or emojis being used as a pronoun, but I will be separating those into noun pronouns and emoji pronouns. Uh, however, I would like to acknowledge that if you see the word xenopronoun, it means... Um, something that is not someone essentially making up a word to use as a pronoun. So like the difference between Zzer and cat, cat self. Now the first thing I want to touch on is just normal neo pronouns. So I am defining that as you made up the word. You either, well, you either not use an individual, but the word was made up for the purpose of being a new pronoun or repurposing an extremely old or very uncommon word uh, to be a pronoun. So it's not traditionally used at all in any context other than being a neo-pronoun. Things like Zzer, uh, AM, he, here, I don't know how to say that one. Um, and some people consider Fayfair to be a neo-pronoun uh, and not a xenopronoun. I'm going to be including it here because I'm going to talk about it specifically, but these are words that were either made up uh, or repurposed as they are no longer used anymore to become a third person pronoun. Now this, this section, I don't really have an issue with, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I agree with it either. I think you, in general, the purpose of a pronoun is a few things. To simplify a place where a noun, sometimes a proper noun, would be used. So basically to make the sentence shorter and more easy to understand. And if it is a third person pronoun, we're living, uh, referring to a living thing, to indicate gender. I would also like to note, this is why there are multiple sets of third-person pronouns. Um, there would be no need for he, she, or they if they... It would all be one thing if the purpose was not to identify the gender of the person you were talking about. Now, I do think that non-binary people are a gray area here, as non-binary can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. So I could understand a non-binary person using multiple sets of pronouns. However, a binary person, trans, or cis... Um, 
doesn't compute with me. Um, that being said, I don't necessarily think it's harmful unless they're using a pronoun that indicates their birth sex and they are binary trans, but that's a whole other thing. Generally, I think these pronouns accomplish that goal. Zeezer accomplishes the same goal as they, them. Uh, it implies that the person being referred to is non-binary or gender neutral in some form, and it is a simpler version of saying someone's name or proper noun or whatever. It makes... It makes sense. It functions the way a pronoun should function. Now, that being said, I don't really understand the purpose of these pronouns because all of them are essentially synonyms for they, them that are overcomplicated. That doesn't necessarily mean I think they're harmful. Uh, I just don't see why they need to exist unless it is to give someone some sense of I'm special, which I'll admit is probably my own bias as a lot of people who use or support these types of pronouns are the kind of like inclusive xenogender supporting or using type. And I will admit that may or may be my own personal bias. Uh, but while I think they are completely unnecessary because they function identically to they, them and have the exact same meaning, um, I don't really think they're hurting anything. I mean, like it would be annoying if someone referred to every single cat as a feline or every single rabbit as a lagomorph but it's not really hurting anything. It's like, technically it still works. A rabbit is a lagomorph, but it sounds a little pretentious and annoying whenever you insist on using lagomorph instead of rabbit. But when it comes down to it, it still conveys the message that needs to be conveyed efficiently. It's just unnecessary and obnoxious. Now that's, that's not to say that people who use these pronouns are doing it to be obnoxious or doing it to be pretentious or doing it to be attention seeking. I'm just saying it seems unneeded. It seems unnecessary. Um, it's like someone using a big word every sentence instead of just having a casual conversation. You know, it's, it's unnecessary, but it still functions properly. So while I look at those and I do admit I roll my eyes a bit or I'm like, mm, why though? At the end of the day, they're not hurting anything. I'm not going to come after someone for using Zezer or whatever. Um, I'm going to mentally roll my eyes a bit and move on because it's not hurting anyone. It's annoying, it's a little pointless, but is it causing a problem? Not really. I mean, it's just unnecessary, but there are lots of unnecessary things in the world that don't hurt anyone. Um, however, that being said, uh, that is not how I feel about all neo-pronouns. Um, that is words that previously did not exist until you made them up to make them a gender-neutral pronoun. When it comes to noun pronouns, which if you don't know what that is, it is someone using a noun in place of he, she, or they. So for example, instead of saying, he went to the store by himself, you would say, cat went to the store by cat self. I have an issue there because the regular neo pronouns, um, they still hold the function of a regular like pronoun. They still imply that the person, imply the person's gender identity, usually being neutral, and they still function to replace a noun and make the sentence simpler. And there's a lot of issues with this is, first of all, I understand certain nouns have connotations that make them seem more feminine, feminine or masculine or androgynous or whatever. But the thing is that these words already have meaning. Um, and a regular person is not going to hear you say cat self and think, oh, sometimes cats are associated with femininity. They're feminine, non-binary. They're going to think, what does that mean? Like, did I hear that right? And it is not helpful to communication because fundamentally language exists to communicate ideas and using cat as a pronoun does not communicate any idea. It does not communicate your gender, your gender identity, and it does not function in the sentence smoothly in a way that accomplishes what a pronoun should accomplish. It overcomplicates the sentence and it also makes things like other gendered phrases like niece, nephew, un uncle, aunt, mother, father, sister, brother, whatever, sibling, gender neutral versions of those terms, it makes that confusing because you can go up to someone and they'll say she, and then they'll be like, you'll be like, oh, that's their sister. Because you may know that they're really like, that's their sister. But then you're like, what do I call them? It just doesn't communicate anything. It serves no purpose other than to make the person using it feel special or feel like their made up xenogender is valid. And it also confuses sentences if the noun is a common noun and, like, 
you're talking about a cat in the same sentence or referring to someone who uses cat pronouns interacting with a cat, that sentence is confusing. It overcomplicates it to an unnecessary degree whenever those pronouns are not even used to alleviate dysphoria. Because, like, with the regular neo-pronouns, I could understand how someone would use Zezer instead of they-them because maybe they-them doesn't alleviate dysphoria because their brain automatically goes they're referring to a group of people. I could understand that. I still think it's a little obnoxious, but I could understand it. It makes sense. But your gender is not cat. Your gender is not connected to cats. That is a completely separate entity from your gender. So how is someone calling you cat self, alleviating dysphoria, um, and validating said gender identity? There is no functional purpose. It does not alleviate dysphoria or induce euphoria if you want to go down that route. It does not simplify the sentence in a way that a pronoun should. It does not imply anything about your gender identity or how to refer to you in other contexts. The word lacks meaning in that context. It, the meaning does not exist. The meaning is, I like this word, use it, and that's it. It serves no functional or linguistic purpose. And people tend to argue, oh, well, language changes, language evolves. And of course that's true. But first of all, there's a difference between language evolving. Evolving implies over time, as new meanings of words are accepted. That can be as short as a slang term popping up in two weeks. Or it can be a word changing over decades. Like, for example, gay used to only mean happy, and now it generally means homosexual. And that took decades to happen. So whether it's happening in two weeks or it's happening in decades... It still needs to be generally recognizable by the group of people that are using it with the meaning that you're using it for. And the issue with that with noun pronouns, if it was just one or two nouns, I could say, you know, okay, it takes time. You're going to have to use it for people to understand what it means. But the thing is that people use it for basically every noun in the dictionary and that just completely makes it all meaningless. If it was one or two words that people were taking and saying, this is now also used as a pronoun, still wouldn't get it, but it would still be able to be functional at some point in an ideal world. But when you're saying any noun can be a pronoun, there's no, like, all, all that's doing is conveying to people that you either don't understand gender, think you are mocking trans people, even if you're not, it can be seen that way, or that you want to be special. And I'm sorry, like, I know that may not be what the intention behind it is, but that is what it portrays. And again, the purpose of language is to convey ideas, and that is the idea that it generally conveys. It does not convey that cats have some connection to your gender identity, because that's not a thing. Language evolving is very different than taking a word with a very set definition and deciding that, for you, it means something completely different, and everyone else just needs to agree with you, or you get to call them buzzwords. And I'm going to move on to emoji pronouns. This is going to be a short section, because there's not much more to say that I didn't say about noun pronouns. Other than noun pronouns, I can still understand that maybe they don't understand gender, or they have a misconception about the purpose of a pronoun, or they're a kid, or maybe they do just want to feel special, or whatever. But this is exclusively used on the internet. Um, with the noun pronouns, I can sort of understand where they're coming from, even if I think it's wrong and harmful. The emoji pronouns are even stated by the people who use them to be for online use uh, and for fun, which it's fine to express yourself in fun ways. But taking something that is fundamental to trans people's well-being and turning it into an admitted accessory and quirk and it makes my profile look cute is a dick move. I feel like it really belittles what trans people experience with misgendering, whether or not they use neo-pronouns. Because even the people who use them will often admit, I like the way it looks. It's cute. Um, it's just for online. And again, with the noun pronouns, I disagree, and I don't think it's functional or makes sense, and I think it harms the trans community, but there's at least like a logic behind it that I can understand if they think they're cat gender or whatever, even if it's wrong. Uh, but this is like admittedly for attention and aesthetic. It is the definition of when I say in other videos, someone is using transness as an aesthetic. This is like the defining perfect example of it. And I mean, I don't think I really have to argue much about why emoji pronouns are stupid, because even a lot of people who use noun pronouns think they're stupid. Um, so I don't feel like I need to go on about that. I feel like 
I hate when people say this, but I feel like it's pretty common sense. It's, a, it's not functional in day-to-day -day life. It says nothing about your gender identity. It is admittedly using someone's identity and marginalized group as an aesthetic. It's a problem. It's gross. Um, and before I go on to some concluding statements, I do want to address it, like it itself as a pronoun for humans, because I really didn't know where to put it in this, but I didn't address it in my last Neo Pronoun video. And the reason for that is that I have mixed feelings on it because it does function. I mean, it is a pronoun. It is a real English pronoun that was not created for this purpose or anything. And a lot of people argue that they're reclaiming it because trans people, disabled people, uh, bigger people and such are often called it to be demeaning. And I've seen people say, oh, I'm reclaiming it. Or people saying that it's due to their dissociation. They don't feel like they exist, et cetera, et cetera. And I can understand that. And I think my, this is a loose opinion, so feel free to try and change my mind or whatever, because I still have mixed feelings on it. I think how I feel about that is that it functions as a pronoun should, and it implies gender neutrality. So I do not think it's an issue. However, I think with noun pronouns and they, them and such, I don't think that, or not noun pronouns, neo pronouns, noun pronouns, no. Uh, for regular neo pronouns or for normal pronouns, I think it's totally fine to not have an opposite set. If you go by Zezer, I think it's fair to say, that's what I go by, don't call me they, them. Uh, again, a little annoying, but fair. With it pronouns, I think there's an issue because a lot of people, regardless of what group they're a part of that is often dehumanized in that way, have bad negative like emotional associations or even trauma with being called it. And I think it's extremely unfair to make someone um, reclaim something against their will. Like, for example, the word queer, right? I do not have a single issue with anyone using queer as their sole identifier or saying queer community or I am queer. Like, I have no issue with that. And I don't have an issue with saying the word, but I do not like it on myself. I do not wish to be referred to as queer in any capacity. It honestly even annoys me when people say queer community instead of LGBT community because not everyone reclaims it, but I kind of understand it. It's easier to type and such, but it's the same thing. I have no issue with you identifying as queer, but you cannot expect me to label myself under the quote unquote queer community whenever I do not reclaim that word, which is again, why I have an issue with the phrase queer community over LGBT community, even if it is easier to type in some senses. A lot of the time people will refer to LGBT people as queer. Like for example, Kat Zun, uh, who made that shitty tweet about me, referred to me as queer two or three times. And I was like, hey, I don't like being called that. And everyone was like, it's reclaimed. Not everyone reclaims everything. Um, and I think it's unfair to expect people to reclaim, it's not a slur, obviously, but like a derogatory term um, whenever they don't feel comfortable with it due to their own history with it. So I guess that boils down to my opinion on it pronouns being if you want to use that pronoun, that is fine, but you literally need to have an alternate set of pronouns because there are a lot of people in a lot of communities that have been demeaned with that word, and I think it's really inappropriate to force them to reclaim it for your own comfort. Um, it's selfish, it's rude, it's disregarding of the trauma that that person or their community may have gone through, especially if they've been called that uh, due to being in a different community than LGBT. So, like, my issue with it boils down to its history and not necessarily how it functions as a pronoun, which is why I wanted it to be its own thing. Um, and I guess I'm going to wrap up with noun pronouns. I have addressed how they hurt the trans community, basically in my Xenogender video, but when you admit that your pronoun has no connection to gender, it's purely because you like it, you think it's fun, it sounds nice, whatever. Um and then proceed to get mad at people or correct people or whatever for not using it, it really minimizes how trans people are affected whenever they are misgendered with their pronoun that indicates their gender. It makes misgendering seem like a mild annoyance or a you're not validating me being special or you're not pretending I'm a cat or whatever. Um, instead of this has been scientifically proven to result in more suicides and more trans mental health issues and whatever, it belittles the issue. Which again comes back to the fact that noun pronouns do not alleviate dysphoria because they have no implication on gender.
it really just takes like misgendering is a struggle for every trans person. Even if you have the most supportive family and friends, they're still going to struggle at first to call you the correct pronouns because they're just not used to it. Um, and so that's like, there are trans struggles that people go through and other people don't, but misgendering is like a universal struggle for trans people. Um, and it takes that like one unifier, one universal thing that we've all dealt with and all have been hurt by and makes it into, this is part of my aesthetic. This is part of my interests, whatever it, it makes it into something not serious. And that results in it not being taken as seriously. That results in more people thinking that xenogenders are valid indirectly. Um, it generally just belittles the experience. And I know that's not the intention of a lot of people. And I don't want to assume that these people have bad intentions or that they're doing it to get attention or whatever. But even if that's not their intention, that's the message it conveys. And that message is a problem. Um, and if the message was a problem and it was affecting the trans community and it was a valid thing that made sense in all the ways I discussed earlier, then I would be like, the rest of the world needs to suck it up. However, that's not the case. Um, it is simply aesthetics. It's not... Not calling you cat self is not harming you mentally or physically or emotionally. <laughs> so uh, that's all for me returning to YouTube for now. Uh, hode. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. I stare at the populace in prayer.